Hi everybody, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this is the fourth video to my top 10 horror movies of all time. Yes, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this will be the last one um, of, of, of this anyway. Um, excuse me. A bottle of generic water <clears throat> in the last video I was coughing um <clears throat> yeah I'll, I'll do a bit of a quick explanation excuse me a minute I've wet my whistle uh yeah um if you don't know what this is about this is the first video you've seen look through my channel look through the first video that will explain everything for you okay I'm not gonna go through this because so far every video has been about half hour long okay um uh, it was only supposed to be one video then it was meant to be two then like the hobbit it ended up being three and then like any horror movie that ever happens and has become a you know, a big success um it just keeps on coming back just as you think it died and it's not gonna happen it comes back and bites you in the gluteus maximus um yeah um I shall briefly, quickly recap. Um, the first video is all about the also rans, the ones that it, they, they were just they're, they're outside the top ten. If I was doing a top one hundred, they would definitely have been in there. Don't ask me to do a top one hundred, please. Don't ask me to do a top one hundred. I will be here till the rest of my life doing videos on like that. Um, the second video was the start of the top ten, which had numbers ten, nine, and eight. The third video was a seven six and five um and i'll quickly go through it number 10 if i remember correctly <laughs> even for you this might be about a week for the, between seeing these videos all right for me this has only been about 10 minutes or so after i just done the last the third video all right which is why i'm wearing the same clothes okay just in case you've got somebody out there going Oh, this is been clothes. This is, this has been going on for about two weeks now, and he's wearing the same clothes. Oh, it's disgusting! It's because I've been doing these videos. I've, it's taken me about two or three hours. Well, about two and a half hours to do these videos. Okay, I've done them in the same day. Okay, that's it. That's answered that question. Right, <clears throat> number ten. American Werewolf in London. Okay, if you want to find out about these videos, why I like them so much, watch the videos beforehand okay number nine number nine? yeah number nine nosferatu the original 1922 black and white movie okay that's all i'm going to say about that in this in this video watch video two for that one number eight i sort of cheated is that was bad taste and brain dead uh, again if you want to know why i'm holding up the cds not showing you the cases watch the first video that explains everything <laughs> Uh, what was that? Number eight, wasn't it? Number eight. Number seven was, <laughs> and I only done this a few minutes ago. Um, number seven was Zombie Flesh Eaters or Zombie Two or whatever one of the, you know, the amazing amount of names that it was known as. That's number seven. Number six was Kronos. Yeah, Kronos. Number seven was... Where did I put the... <laughs> Number seven was another cheat, and that was <clears throat> Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. Day of the Dead. But uh, I didn't actually go into Day of the Dead, but Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. That was on video three. Now we have, hopefully, the last four movies in the top 10 and these are in order okay of my favorite horror movies of all time um i think <laughs> or something like that uh now i'm gonna go on to them just to give you a bit of an idea i'm a collector like all of us we all collect uh if this is the first video you've seen of mine i don't usually do horror movies i usually do comic books okay but i collect comic books and 
if there's a variant cover of a comic book and I like it, I want to get it, as well as probably getting the original cover of the comic as well. And the same goes for movies, especially horror movies. If there is a horror movie that I like and there is a different version of it, I will get it. Uh, I think the only movie that I've not done that with is Blade Runner. I've seen it. I've seen all the different versions of it, but I don't actually own it on disc. It's really weird. Um, I like the movie as well. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, absolutely fantastic movie. But I just don't own it on DVD for some unknown reason. So, um, <coughs> so again, warnings for people watching this video. This video is not about comic books. It's about my top 10 horror movies okay if you've seen the previous videos you'll know this all right this is the same day that i started off doing this video so i am still buzzing a bit from the coffee that i had this morning and with my adhd ice might go on to tangents which is why it, it went from one video to four videos each going on for about half hour long and three this might be a long one Okay, I'm going to try and do it so it's under half, around about half an hour, but these are the top four videos that I like, horror movies of all time. So I'm hoping this is going to be the last video, but it may be a long one. Okay, that's why I've got my bottle of generic tap water here. <clears throat> right. Number four of my favorite horror movies of all time. And I don't know what that was, but it was hard and horrible and ugh, it shouldn't have gone in my mouth. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, I think it was a bit off the top of the bottle actually. It might have been a little bit of plastic off the top of the bottle. There's a, um, number four of my favorite horror movies of all time. And these ones, I'm sorry, <laughs> the camera started bouncing up and down there. That's because the leg of the table that my laptop's on is actually touching the, the sofa. Let's, let's get a little bit closer together, shall we? Hello. Hello, viewers. <laughs> <coughs> yes, number four. I will get there, honest. Number four of my favourite horror movies of, of all time. Um, I first saw this horror movie when I was 12 years old. I think I was 12 or 13 years old. Um, it was possibly then one of the first modern horror movies that I actually saw of that time. Beforehand, I'd seen horror movies, but they were the black and white universal ones like Dracula, Frankenstein, The Wolfman, Frankenstein meets The Wolfman, Bride of, Bride of Frankenstein, those sort of things. Um, in a sense... I suppose you could say this was the one that got me started with wanting to watch horror movies, modern, or, or for that time, modern horror movies. Excuse me. I always liked the black and white ones, the black and white horror movies. They were like almost like cartoons to me, really, because they were black and white and they weren't really scary. Um, I, but like I said, I saw this when I was about 12 years old and it scared you'll have to excuse me if you want to bleep out the words you can do yourself anybody who's got young children involved in watching this video why you got young children watching this video in the first place because it's about horror movies you know um but I was 12 years old I was around my best mate's house and he is still my best mate we're like brothers um we're we we're only three we were only born three days apart from each other <laughs> um i was round his house he had this on and i watched it and watching it it didn't scare me but that night it scared the living shite out of me um like i said i was about 12 or 13 years old and that night I did not get to sleep until about four o'clock in the morning, which was a real pain in the ass for my mum and dad because I was doing everything I could to try and keep myself awake. That might give you a clue about what this movie is, about staying awake. 
Um, <laughs> I also had to go to school the next day, which I don't think actually happened. I think um, I, I suffer from migraines anyway. I think I feigned a migraine <laughs> just so I could get to sleep in the morning. Um, it was Johnny Depp's, I believe, one of Johnny Depp's first movies that he was ever in. It was also one of, apart from, apart from one other movie, I think it was Robert England's first movie he was in. It is a nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> now this this is not the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. This is not the abomination that is the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. How they could make a movie like that and do it so badly is un unknown to me. Um, oh. But this, I, I, I should tell you, this movie had such an impact on me, right? Um, obviously not as big an impact as my best, my favourite movie of all time, but this movie had such an impact on me that we've got a shop here in this in the uk called cash converters and uh i saw in there years and years ago i saw that they had this in their window this is the eight disc complete set of nightmare on elm street you have got um a booklet in it you have got um, 3D glasses in it, an envelope with 3D glasses in it, which I completely forgot about right now, actually. You have got Nightmare on Elm Street 1, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, um, Freddy's Revenge, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, Dream Master, Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. Nightmare on Elm Street 6, The Final Nightmare. Oh, if only it was. And Wes Craven's New Nightmares in it. Not only that, but you also had in it the Nightmare series Encyclopedia. This is the, the disc the, 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 the disc that come with this specific box set. Um, and this this movie had such an and unfortunately they were a bit the boxes because they're made out of cardboard they're a bit warped now unfortunately but I still love it um, this movie had such an impact on me this is a region one box set okay if you don't know much about DVD players um, I'm sure everybody knows any case, but I'll, but I'll explain anyway just in case there's anybody out there who doesn't understand who doesn't know about DVD players DVD players to combat, um, from, from what I remember about DVD players when they first come out, to combat the um, chance of people in other countries getting movies that hadn't been released in the cinema yet from other countries where the movie had been released in the cinema, had been seen and then was released in DVD... The people who made DVDs, which I, if I remember correctly, was it wasn't Sony, I don't think. It was was it Philips, I think, made DVDs. I can't remember what company it was that invented DVDs. But anyway, the company that invented DVDs decided that they were going to give them region codes. Okay, um, in the UK and most of Europe, this is dusty. Uh, in the UK and most of Europe, region code is region two. From what I remember, in America and in Canada, the region code is Region Three. In Europe, sorry, in in um, Australia, it's Region Code Three. Uh, no, sorry, in America and Canada, Region Code One. In the UK and most of Europe, it's Region Code Two. In Australia. And possibly Japan, it's region code three and four or something like that, and it goes up to region code seven, okay. And I think seven, seven, eight, or nine, I think it was. And and those ones were for things like um, 
airplanes where you had long haul flight airplanes and that they would have the, the, the movies and that and you put the DVD in and that would be sort of region code nine, which they only played on things that were in, in movie in uh, in in um, airplanes and that and such. Um, then you also had movies where they didn't really care who got hold of them in whatever country. So they were region zero or region three rather than region three which is the number region free as in no you, know, you could play them on any dvd um any dvd player around the world <clears throat> um nightmare on elm, elm street had such an impact on me that i bought this region one dvd box set which had the then complete set of all the nightmare on elm street movies in it from a shop a second hand uh, so yeah second hand shop called cash converters yeah this cost me 70 pounds yeah i didn't even have a dvd player at the time that's how much this movie impacted me i did not have a dvd player at the time i bought this first and then i went out and i bought a multi-regional dvd player so i could watch this on the on dvd um that's how that's how uh, much of an impact it had on me um if you don't know the 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 story of nightmare on elm street i will quickly run through it with you uh in the the sleepy little uh sleepy little place called elm street which i believe in america most every city has got an elm street in it from what i understand which is one of the reasons why wes wes craven called the movie Elm Street because it could pertain to almost any city in America that has got an Elm Street. Um, oh, sorry, just getting comfortable. <laughs> there was um, a guy called Freddy Krueger who was a, a caretaker at a school, a local school in the, the street, Elm Street, um, and he was a child molester. He, uh, he was a paedophile, child molester, child murderer, whatever you want to call him. He was a very, 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 very nasty man. Um, he would um, take children and murder them and do unspeakable things to them. And he had a glove that he built himself, which was had razor sharp talons on it. Um, the people of Elm Street found out <coughs> that what he'd been doing he was arrested and purely on a technicality some stupid minor detail that happened he got off scot-free he was let uh, allowed to let you know go his his own merry way and the, the the people of elm street understandably who not only had children that were murdered by him um, but also the people who had children that wasn't murdered by them wasn't happy about this. So they took it upon themselves to take justice into their own hands. They ended up locking him up in the boiler room of the school and setting fire to him and killing him for what they thought was forever. Years pass. And the teenagers of Elm Street start having strange dreams, strange nightmares of this extremely scary, seriously scarred and burnt person who has talons for claws, a clawed glove hand, and he goes and murders these kids in the one place that their parents cannot protect them in their sleep. Uh, I've seen documentaries, I've read articles, I've read books and everything about the movie and, and, and such. And from what I understand, Wes Craven got the idea from, he read a, a newspaper article, a, a couple of newspaper articles where kids had actually died in their sleep. They were normal, healthy kids nothing wrong with them, <clears throat> fit as anything, and but they just died in their sleep. And this got him thinking, well, why, why did they die? Why did they die in their sleep? What was the reason? 
And then he sort of thought, well, maybe they had a dream that was so scary, it gave him a heart attack and they, they died. And that's where the premise of Nightmare on Elm Street comes from. You have this guy, Freddy Krueger, who enters into the night, the, the dreams, the dreamscape of the teenagers of Elm Street. And he terrorizes them, torments them, tortures them, and eventually kills them. And when they die in their sleep, they die in real life. Uh, the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie was just, it, it, it did hit me hard. It might not have felt like it when I first saw it. It was like, oh yeah, okay. You know, guts, blood and guts, and you know, a woman gets dragged across the, the ceiling and her boyfriend sees her, this happening to her and that, and he gets arrested. He ends up getting hung in, um, in jail. You know, when they and they think, oh, he's just committed suicide, and it's not that. Uh, like I said, Johnny Depp's in this, in one of his first movie appearances, uh, and it, it is uh, an amazing death scene for Johnny Depp. Um, I where I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't seen this movie, um, but it's an amazing death scene for Johnny Depp in this movie, um, <laughs> and the way they did it as well was was a really amazing thing if i remember correctly they actually built the whole bedroom set on this sort of gurney thing and um they 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 needed not to spoil it they needed a lot of blood to come out of somewhere yeah and the only way they could get the blood to come out of this place in the way they wanted to which was if they tried to do it normally would have completely defied gravity would have, the way they did it was they turned the room completely upside down and gushed the blood the fake blood out of the uh the, the hole of where it was nightmare on elm street brilliant film absolutely brilliant film unfortunately it suffers so much from so many horror movies, the thing that so many horror movies suffers from, and that is the sequel. The first movie, absolutely brilliant. Second movie, it was okay. Third movie, really by the third and fourth movie, Freddy, but definitely by the fourth movie, the character of Freddy Krueger become a parody of himself. So much so that you actually had kids going around in America, from what I understand, kids going around in America dressing up for Halloween as Freddy Krueger. How's that for irony? You have little kids dressing up as somebody who really, in the movie, is a child molester and a murderer, a child murderer. You know, this is, you know, this is, this, this was the... This was how the character of Freddy Krueger took the the people all around the world. You know, this is this is how he he, he got to them. Um, yeah, you know, I I even remember reading there's an issue of a four issue miniseries from DC Comics called Plastic Man, um, and I think it's in issue four. There is an advert in there where you can actually buy a replica glove. Freddy Krueger glove with I think it's plastic or hard plastic knives on it and a hat like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's number four for for my videos. Number three, and we're getting on to twenty four minutes here, and it looks like we might end up having. Just as you think it's gonna finish, I might end up having to do another video just to do numbers two, two and one. Um, so I'm sorry about this if this is getting boring for you. Number three, oh, and it's very dusty. <laughs> uh, number three in my top ten video horror videos of all time, and this one is possibly the one that got me interested in serial killers as well uh when i found out the the blurb at the very beginning of the movie is this movie is based on real life events um 
to a certain extent, yes, it was based on real life events. Uh, the director of it said that it, it was based on the serial killer, Ed Gein. Uh, and it's, it's one of those, it was a video nasty in this country. It was classed as a video nasty in this country. I don't think it was actually on the convicted list of video nasties. I think it was on the second list of ones that they went to court over them, but it didn't actually, nothing happened to it, but it was still wasn't able to be distributed in the UK at the time. The only way you could see this movie, if you wanted to see it, was through pirated VHS tapes. And I think that actually added more to the mythos of the movie and the whole uh, the legend of the movie if you want really um, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and as I said in the beginning of this video I'm a collector so the more I like a video the more I like something I will collect it Texas Chainsaw Massacre the very first one that's uh, region. That's region two. That's the blue dolphin version. Region two of it. Yeah. That's the one disc, digitally remastered, widescreen version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We have um, the region one, one disc version of the American version of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And we have the Universal Special Edition version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I think this is, is this one disc as, as well? Yes, yeah, it's just one disc as well. Uh, as I said, it, it was in some respect based on the serial killer, Ed Gein. Uh, I won't go too much into detail with him and I've said in previous video that I do have a fascination with serial killers. I will reiterate again from the previous video, it's not a morbid, weird fascination of serial killers. It's more of the psycho, you know, the psychological, psycho, psychiatric side of the serial killers, of why they do it, you know, how they do it, how can they, you know, do that sort of thing. And um, Ed Gein from what I can remember, was the first real serial killer that got airtime, really. There were previous serial killers before him. Um, I can't... If, if you want me to do a video on serial killers, then I will do. This This video is, is coming up to the, close to the 30-minute mark, so there is going to be a fifth video. Sorry, guys, on this. Um, I thought this was going to be the last one. But, as I said before, like all the horror movies, there's just so many sequels. Um, this movie, you you have the group of teenagers that go on a, on a trip. They're going to their... Um, there's a brother and sister who are going to go to their grandmother's home deep in the, the the backwaters of america i can't remember exactly where i think it's on like mississippi or or or, or or texas or somewhere like that well, mississippi you twonk texas that's why it's called the texas chainsaw mouthing huh um yeah sorry <laughs> in in right back in you know in the in the in the, the backwoods of texas they're going to their their grandparents home their grandparents just died they're going to the house see what they can do if they need to you know if they can redo it up and maybe live in it or if not sell it on um as they go as they as they're traveling along with them and their friends they come across a hitchhiker who they they pick up he uh is a complete lunatic uh, and 
ev after they end up getting rid of him, their day just gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, <laughs> the The movie it is a gory movie, but if you watch it now, I obviously the British version. The British version now isn't cut. The British version you could get hold of beforehand, I think, was cut. This is the American version. Even in, even in the American version, there isn't really that much gore in it. There's a lot of off-screen gore. Um, I think the, the most goriest thing in this in this movie is when the main character, one of the main characters, Leatherface, who is one of the, the one of the cannibalistic that is the son of uh, one of the sons of the cannibalistic family. Um, he gets hold of a woman and he picks her up and he jams her onto a meat hook. And she's left there dangling in midair with a meat hook. Obviously not really. You know, it's a movie. But she's left there in the movie dangling there with a meat hook stuck in her spine. Um, and then he goes off with a chainsaw and starts chopping up her boyfriend, I think it is. Um, who previously he smacks over the head with a mallet um, in a similar way that they would do to things like cows and pigs in the sort of house. Um, you could view it as a similar, in a similar vein to uh, Dawn of the Dead, where Dawn of the Dead is showing you there's not much difference between the flesh-eating zombies that are staggering around and jumping and, and crawling around the shopping malls. There's not much difference between them and normal people just shuffling around and crawling around shopping malls and shopping precincts and centres and that. Um, you could view it... You could almost view it as a, 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 a vegetarian or vegan sort of like uh, wish list, really. Um, showing people uh people actually being the food rather than pigs and cows and chickens and uh, at the moment horses uh, in this country being used for food it's not it's us it's the people it it is the horror version of soylent green if you really want to be like that you know um you could view it as 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 a a a take on the consumerism of how we view our food where where our food comes from uh you could also just view it as a horror film it is just a guy a crew a family of inbred knuckle dragging low brow seriously screwed up people who kill people kill a lot of people and eat them you know, and, but but it, it was one of those ones where the first time I ever saw it was on a, a grainy copy of a 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 VHS videotape. Uh, and I remember where I got it as well. Uh, it was that uh, there was a guy uh, in the town here. He used to sell, have a market store who, where he sold DVDs. And I was stood there one day and he just turned around and said, oh, is there anything you're looking for? And I said, well, I've, I've seen you see, you know, you've got some horror films in that area. He goes, oh, you like horror films? I went, yeah. And he goes, oh, because um, do you like video nasties? And I was like, well, I haven't seen many of them, but I could be tempted to sort of like be interested in getting hold of some if you've got some. And he said, well, come with me. And he took me around the back of his stall. Um, and that's all right, I was an adult by then. <laughs> and and um, he he produced a bag full of VHS tapes. Kids, if you don't know what VHS tapes are, ask your parents or grandparents, okay, what VHS tape is, and they'll explain it to you. Um, and in amongst this bag of horror films uh, was a copy of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. When I got it home and I put it on, it was a pretty good copy. Uh, and, and like I said, that was the only way you could really get these horror movies was by 
disreputable places or disreputable people or people who had copies of them copying them for you on VHS. Yes, highly illegal. Yes, uh, you know, even back then, highly illegal. And, you know, but it was but it was the only way you could get hold of a copy to see it. Um, the guy no longer is in town. I mean, this this is quite a long time ago. It's about 15 years ago, I think that must this must have happened. So the guy's no longer in town. Chances are he might even have been arrested and he might be in prison at the moment or whatever. Uh, but he's no, he's no longer there. Um, I did get quite a few video nasties off him that in that way. Um, and not cheaply either. <laughs> uh, in my naivety of the time, not very cheaply, I must hasten to add. Uh, but that, like I said, that, that just added to the, the whole mythos mythos of, of the movie. You knew it wasn't, but you knew it wasn't a true story. But when you found out about the movie and where Toby Hopper got the idea for the movie, you realised that, yes, in a way, it was based in real life. So that's number three on my favourite horror movies of all time. And I'm going to stop it there because this is 36 minutes long. Um, well, right, when you see me, you're going to see me in exactly the same thing. Blah, 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 blah. If you've got any comments, comment section down below. If you haven't got bored of seeing these videos by now um, and you, you, you haven't put your top 10 or your favourite movies or whatever... Or if you've got any comments at all on any of the movies that, that I've shown here, then please comment section down below. Love to hear from you. If you like the video and you're not bored of these videos yet, thumbs up. If you don't like the video because you're thinking to yourself, man, Saw didn't have those many, this many sequels to it, um, then feel free to, to thumbs down. But if you thumbs it down, as I always say, if you thumbs it down, say why you thumbs it down. Seriously, 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 seriously. These guys, they've got mobile numbers. I've got their number. I can send them round to you. I don't care if you thumbs the video down, but just say why you thumbs it down. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, I apologise now. I honestly thought this was going to be one video, um, and it's now turning into five. <laughs> Possibly by now I've already gone past my 300 subscribers. Possibly by now I've probably lost some subscribers because of this. Um, oh, so I, I thank you, oh, I thank you all for watching these videos and and being with you know with me through these videos. There are only two more horror movies to go, so there will only be one more video to go. The fifth video, the fifth and final chapter. Right. Thank you for watching. Honestly, thank you for watching. Take care. I will see you in a few days, but for me, it will be a mere few minutes. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>